Donald's attorneys bring up previous administrations where they have conducted raids, uh, where they have uh, conducted raids and gone to Congress for authorization based on uh, information that turned out to be false. Those actions by respectively uh, uh, President Obama and before that President Bush, they were done with the president's official role as the commander in chief. So comparing those actions to explicit violations of law, like conspiracy to defraud and conspiracy to obstruct and conspiracy to deprive rights goes far beyond what, what uh, the defense is saying that Donald Trump you know, has the ability to do. The, um, so effe effectively everywhere you see, it says official responsibilities, the outer perimeters of the job um, where he, you know, where he can ex exercise his own discretion. And later on in the argument, it says that everything is at the president's discretion. Because even laws that are ministerial in nature leave something up to the discretion of whoever is, you know, applying the law. And that makes, that makes no sense because Congress expressly makes laws that are applied to everybody equally. While the president enjoys immunity from criminal prosecution while he is president, that immunity goes away because the immunity stays with the office, not with the person. Now, if they have violated some ministerial statutes over which the president had no discretionary authority, like the, the president has when the president is the commander in chief, here the president isn't the elector in chief or, or has not been designated any duty by the constitution. So here, the president's job is to just take care that the laws be faithfully executed. And he doesn't do that. He violates them. And what that does is it attaches lack of criminal immunity. It, it makes them amenable to the laws if it is a ministerial act over which Donald Trump and presidents generally do not have authority to move around and decide on their own how to go about those laws.